Well, thank you very much for coming. Uh, I will try to speak in English, <laughs> but I, I, I will attempt to do it. I think that it's not necessary to, to say how important are, is the presidential election of the next October in, in Venezuela. Uh, six weeks ago, uh, Jose Waldenberg and, and I visit Venezuela and we have uh, the opportunity to be with, the, with very different people <coughs> from uh, the government and the opposition. And as a consequence of that visit, we made a report that we can reduce to three parts. The first one is that in a way, is in a way uh, more optimistic in the sense that we analyze the electoral system in the narrow, in the narrowest sense of this, uh, of this subject. And I will say that uh, we, we discovered there are some, some reason for optimism. There is a second part that uh, is a reference to the conditions of competition between the two forces, the two main forces. And I will say that in that sense, uh, we are not so optimistic, but that is the second point. I will make reference to the first part, to the electoral system, and Jose Waldenberg will make reference to the conditions of competition. Later, we can discuss the scenarios after the election. What could happen that night or the several months after this election? And, but I, our first part of the presentation will be a reference to the electoral system and later to the condition of competence. Talking about an electoral system, I will say that is of course uh, related to the electoral law, but it's a lot more than an electoral law. Of course, it's crucial the, the public service that is in charge of the organization of the, of the electoral process. But I will say that being so important is not enough. And mainly I will say that an electoral process in the narrowest, narrowest sense of this uh, matter is a kind of ag agonistic conflict in which you have a, a, a game, or if you prefer, a war between two actors in which the players combat according to some rules. And it is very important what happened in this, in this sense. Then the, the game is a process in which the two main Conditions are a set of rules, and secondly, the level of organization of every player. player. That leads me to an hypothetic situation, one in which you have a perfect set of rules, and because you have in the opposition a complete lack of organization, it is possible, even is easy, to have a fraud. But at the same time, if you don't have perfect rules, but you have an outstanding level of organization in the opposition, then it's possible to make impossible a fraud. Then, if you are looking for the perfect situation, uh, this clearly is not. But my point is that in spite of that, there are if you are looking to the electoral process in a, the narrowest sense of this word, there is a, a, a room for a, a, a very interesting outcome. I, 
I want to be precise on this because in this matter nuances are extremely important. I am not saying that rules are not necessary. My assessment is that even if they are not perfect, you can counterbalance those imperfections with a, a high level of organization by the, by the opposition. Saying in another way, I think that today in Venezuela, not because the government, there are enough rules, some of them imperfect, some of them uh, very good, that doesn't make possible to have a fraud without being detected to have a massive fraud without being detect detected. That is the, my, my assumption. That is our conviction with, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, Jose Waldenberg, that you have enough rules that makes impossible to have a massive fraud, fraud without, without being detected. Which, is, which are those rules and proceedings. First of all, the system is technologically very advanced. There is no two opinions on that. By the very different uh, uh, people that has visited Venezuela, some of them <coughs> close to the opposition, some of them uh, close to Mr. Chavez, everybody said that the uh, electoral system is technologically uh, very advanced. Second, the system allows the transparency of, of some aspect that may possible the monitoring and oversight of the electoral process. Um, third, the Venezuelan opposition is in a very good condition to take advantage of this information to oversight and to monitor the election. We are not talking about an opposition that is in disarray. We are talking, as we will say <coughs> a few minutes later, an, of an opposition that is doing a, a very good job in terms of the oversight and on monitoring of the election. Let me go in details. The voter registry, registries are, available, are, uh, are available by polling station and tables all over the country. And what is most important, the opposition has those registries. Talking with the people in charge of the opposition, we ask them, do you have the registries? Of course we have it. Please, do you have the registry of the table number 23 in the state of Sucre? And they say, well, here, here you have the registry. That is a, a fact. It's not the case in which you don't have a, a public registries of the voters. Second, the person in charge of the polling station, according to the, lay, to the law, are designated by public lottery. The list of this person is available. It's available for the opposition, of course, and for the government. And the opposition has those lists. Talking in a very, very uh, concrete way with the people of the opposition, we ask again, which are the five persons that are in charge of the table number 65 in Carabobo? And they say, well, here you have the five, the five names. And which is your impression? The selection of these people were, were made by lottery? Yes. Our impression is that we are made by lottery. Third, the opposition has the right to name one poll watcher for, poll, for every polling station and, and table. Uh, that means that you have a, 
let me say 40,000 table, 38,000 uh, table, you have the right to have a, 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 a poll watcher in every, in every table. In the past, one of the weakness of the opposition was, was that they didn't have a poll watcher in those uh, polling stations with one table that are very rural and at the same time that are located very far from the, from the main uh, centers of population. And what some study that we saw with, uh, with, with Jose Waldenberg is that in those places in which you don't have a poll watcher from the opposition, the vote were, let me say, 65 against 30 percent. Clearly, you look those those figures and you say, perhaps here we we, we have a, a fraud. The real problem is that if the opposition is a, is for the opposition is possible, if they if they have enough capability of organization to have a poll watcher, even in those very distant places. And what we hear we hear from them from them is that. This time, they have an outstanding organization to have poll watchers in every, in every table. Which is the way in which the people vote? The, the identification of the, voter, the, of the voters is using a fingerprint reader. This is a main subject of discussion. Because for some people, they said, well, there is a connection in the, in between the fingerprinter reader and the voting machine. And because, because that, you can know which is the, uh, the, the, the person for, for which person uh, he or she vote, then you don't have you, you don't have the secret of the vote. Let me say, there are a lot of audit that say that that is not impossible. Our very frank conversation with the member of the Consejo Nacional Electoral of the opposition, that is a person that I trust, he explains us in detail that this is not possible. Speaking with the people of the Mesa de Unidad, they say that it's not possible to uh, make impossible the, the, the secret of the vote. But in spite of that, we have to realize <coughs> that almost three of ten persons that vote for the opposition don't trust in this. And they think that perhaps the combination between the fingerprint reader machine and the voting machine will make possible for them for the for the government to know, uh, for him to for, for whom to to vote, but uh, in technical matters, I will say that I discover we discover a lot of information from the people of the opposition, from the leaders of the most important mass media against Mr. Chavez, saying that uh, this connection is not possible. Um, well, after this, when you vote, the machine gives to the voter a receipt, a printed receipt, that said you vote for this. And you receive that receipt. And you put it in a box that is in the table. And then you vote. Later, you, you obtain the receipt. You put the receipt in a box that is uh, in, in the table, a separate ballot box. Well, when the process, the electoral process is, is finished that, the, that day, the machine sends the result to the National Electoral Council, but at the same time gives to you, to every poll watcher and to every mo member of the table, uh, the result. And then you have, let me say, if you are in the table number 14, the machine 
send the result to the National Electoral Council, but at the same time, give you a copy. If I am the poll watcher of, of Mr. Capriles, I receive a, a, rece a, a, a copy of the, of the result. But after that, all the chairpersons of the tables, they have a, a meeting and they select a number of tables in which you will have a count that will be a manual count. Let me say, if we have here 10 tables, the person that are the chairperson of, the, of, the, of this table, they have a meeting and they say, well, we will have a manual count of these six tables. They select those. And which is the way they open this, the, the, the box that is in the table with the receipt and they count the votes. And they produce an act with that result. Let me say, in the year 2010, 55% of the tables were submitted to this kind of manual count that they call Verificación Ciudadana. And finally, the Consejo Nacional Electoral has the obligation to publish the result table by table, not totals only, table by, by table. They have to publish the result in the table number 16 in the in Guayana, and you have that. And by that way, my point is that if you have a well-organized opposition, you have three ways to count the votes. The first one is the machine that gives you a receipt to the poll watcher. Secondly, the verificación ciudadana that select 50% of the, of the tables in which you have a manual count. And later, you can make the comparison between the act of the machine, the act of the Verificación Ciudadana, and the result table by table uh, that must publish the Consejo Nacional Electoral. There are three ways in which you, well, let me say, I am, what I am saying is that even if the system is not perfect, if you have a well-organized opposition that can have the register of the voters in every table, then that can monitor the selection by lottery of the people in charge of the table, that can have a poll watcher in any table that receive the result of the machine and obtain that receipt. Secondly, if those poll watchers have the monitoring of the, of the Verificación Ciudadana, and later, if you make the comparison of this uh, data table by table, I think that a well-organized opposition uh, have the opportunity to, to look this in, in, a, in, a very, in a very good way. Of course, you can destroy the system. But if you destroy the system, it will be so clear that the fraud was, was open, was over. Of course, you can bring the military inside the inside the, poll, the, the polling station, of course. Every poll watcher will, will go out. You, don't, you will not have count. My point is that according to the rules, it is impossible to have a massive fraud without being detected. I am not saying that you can have a fraud because violence or because uh, uh, the eruption of a... Uh, of, uh, uh, groups inside the, the, the place. This is 
my 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 presentation on this. I think that looking to this, you will say is um, there is a, a good opportunity for a, an opposition that is well organized uh, to monitor the the election. But there are some other things that are more complex and. Also, Wolver Wolver will talk about. 